Welcome to Morfolio Trace. In this video, we'll learn how to set up your project page, what the project interface looks like, how to use your pens and brushes, and how to work with layers. Let's get started. When we first open Morfolio Trace, we'll just tap on it here, you can see that we're immediately brought to the project page. At the top of the project page up here, is where you can start a new project. There are all different ways of starting a project. And on the bottom part is where all of your project files are located. So what we'll do is we'll tap on one of the examples here, this example plan, to take a look at what the interface is. On the left side, you can see that there's the brush toolbar. On the right are your layers. At the top are your drawing tools, and on the top left are your project settings and drawing modes, and on the top right up here is your export button. So let's first take a look at your brush toolbar. And you can think of this as your pencil pouch where you have all of your different types of markers and um, pens ready for you to draw whenever you want to go. If you tap on one of them, you'll see that you have a whole range of options everywhere from a technical pen, pen, pencil, a permanent marker, a watercolor brush, chisel, china marker, and a pastel. A special note is that the eraser is also one of those brushes. I like to keep it at the top of my toolbar, that way it's handy and, and quick to use. So above that is your color selector, and you can scroll through these different swatches to pick different colors. You can also tap on the palette icon at the top of that toolbar, where you can see all different palettes that are preloaded in Morfolio Trace. And so you can tap one of these, hit the little button, and you can see on the left side, it's changing our setting up there. If you want to add your own custom color palettes, you can also tap the plus button up there, and you can see that now I have this new palette. You can tap on the title there to change it. And to add colors to this area, just tap colors down in the bottom left, and now you're brought to this custom color selector where you can use the, the sliders here. You can also input RGB codes, HSV codes, or number code. And when you're ready, you can just tap on any of the empty boxes at the bottom as you select your new colors. If there are any colors that you don't want that you accidentally added, you can always tap and hold and then hit delete to remove that color from the palette. Now, when we go back to our palette uh, selector again, you can see that the custom color palette is set up there and ready for you to go. If you wanna remove this though, you can swipe left on it, tap delete, and then you've removed that palette from your palettes. So there's one more tool in this that's really special, which is the eyedropper tool. And you can see that this uh, icon target shows up and when we hit that one more time, when we move around, you can see that my color here is changing as I scroll over different colors on my drawing. So if you've drawn something, or let's say you're bringing a drawing from the computer and you wanna match the color that's already on your drawing, you can just use this color selector to find the color. And when you've done, uh, you can see that it's updated over there on the left. So the next uh, part of your brush toolbar that's really important is your line type selector, which is located right above the color. And you can see if you tap on that, there's four different options here. So um, some people get a little confused. The first option is actually your continuous brush option. You can see that we're getting a continuous line. We're getting a dash line, a dotted line, and at the very end is your center line. So if, you, if you're looking for your Continuous line again, remember it's the first one. At the very top are undo and redo buttons. So the very top button is your scale pen tool. And this is where you set the size of the brush that you want to use. 
And this tool is really incredible because um, it allows you to return to the, the line weights that you like to use um, in specific ones, but it also allows you to draw lines that are appropriate for the size of the zoom that you're at. So you can see when we zoom in to draw detail, it's shifting and offering us brushes that are most appropriate for this uh, scale of the drawing. So we can zoom in here, draw some lines, and uh, when we zoom out, you'll see that it's suggesting different line types. So maybe at this level, we wouldn't be drawing the details there, but we might be filling that whole area in and we can use the thicker line weight to do that same uh, type of drawing. Really, really helpful. Um, even when you zoom in, you can see that the, the bigger brush is still selected. This is just this is just offering you different options that you are um, at there. So the last part of the scale pen is the opacity slider here. So if we reduce that down, you can see that our line that was opaque is now super transparent. And so there's a whole range, obviously, that you can get from within there. Um, but it's another way to modify and to um, change your brushes and make them very specific to the way that you want your brushes to appear. So now let's take a look at the layer toolbar, which is located over on the right side. So you can see here that your layers are obviously each here. If you tap on them, it will zoom automatically to that layer, which is a really, really helpful tool. If you're navigating around your drawing, you want to quickly get to a part. Um, you can just tap on the layer and uh, the screen will zoom to that layer. The other thing that's really important to know about layers is that you are always drawing on the topmost layer. So whatever layer is highest on your list is the layer that is active for your drawing. The other thing to note is that if you tap and hold on a layer, you can change its order. So you can move it back and forth. Um, you can move around. You can see that here we're changing the overlapping order when we move it back and forth. You can also hide a layer by tapping the little eye. first thing that you can add is a new layer. So you can see when I tap that, now I have a new layer that's added and you can see that it added it to the full size of the screen. Um, if we zoom in, we can do the same thing and we can add a new layer, but again, it's the full size of the screen. So this time that layer is much smaller than the first one that we added. And this is really important because um, Trace is a raster based program. So that means it works off of pixels. And um, so a thing to note is that each layer of Trace has the same number of pixels. So what that means is if you have a bigger layer, you have uh, a lower pixel density. And if you make a smaller layer, you have a much higher pixel density. So you're able to draw with some of these really fine lines and get full clarity on the lines that you use because you're working with a smaller layer. So the next uh, button up here is the add image icon. And here you can add anything. This can be a drawing, a photo, a reference image, um, a mood board, whatever it is that you want to add into your drawing space, you can add that here. So you can add things from your library, from cloud storage. There's also a whole bunch of grids. Um, and other design templates that you can draw on top of. So let's go to our cloud uh, storage here. We have a drawing of a, an office plan here. So what we'll do is add in this mood board that was made in Morfolio board, and we'll bring that into drawing uh, space here as a little bit of reference. So what you can see is that now we're in the space where we can resize this, we can change its uh, orientation. What I'm gonna do is make it a little smaller. I'm gonna use one finger to drag it over to the side here. And since I'm done, I'm going to hit the check. And now that image has been inserted into my drawing. So the next feature is the text feature. And this is great for adding in annotations, adding in notes or titles. And then here you can see that we can change the color. So maybe we'll make it black. And you can also change the font into any preloaded um, fonts by Apple here. And when you're done, make sure that you tap back in your space here and then hit done to insert this text into your project. And what you can see is now we can pinch to scale it and we can move it down here to add a title to our drawing.
So we'll zoom to this, this layer here. We'll tap on the three buttons. And now you can see that the layer action panel has been pulled up. What you can do here is you can change the title of the layer. So you can tap on it and change the title. You can also change the opacity of the layer from fully opaque to fully transparent or somewhere in between. You can change the layer uh, color. So you can have the default yellow here, the canary yellow. You can go all white or all black, depending on how you want to draw. Um, we'll reduce the opacity here. And if we return to our project, our actions, um, you can see that there's an option called paper blending. If we tap on that, you can see that there are different ways that you can overlay your layer on top of your other drawings. So let's say you want to have your line work be visible, uh, your kind of baseline work visible through your drawing. If you tap multiply, you can see that we can see both the, the chairs below it, um, but you can also still see that mark versus normal. So let's take a look at see normal and multiply. And so all these allow you different ways of blending your pages together. And then below that is uh, a few different options to manipulate your layer. So you can scale and place it, which will bring you to a place where you can move this layer around. You can do everything. You can also clear a layer, so, a layer, so that will remove all of the drawing that you've put on that layer. It will take it completely off. You can delete the layer, which will remove that layer from the project totally. Um, be careful of those two features because once you do them, there's no way to undo them. So um, there are a couple of steps to protect from that, but just something to be aware of. Uh, you can also duplicate a layer so you can make a, a copy of it in your project. You can lock it so you don't accidentally move it around your drawing space and you can mirror it just like you would with regular trace paper, which is a really fun feature. Now we'll take a look at our image actions you see it's similar, but it also has this image opacity slider. And this is really helpful. Let's say that we're sketching some lines just to get a feel for what this table is maybe, but it's kind of hard to see that drawing, right? And this could happen with a plan. This could happen with another type of drawing, um, but this one just, it could be a photo as well. But now what you can do is you can move this slider down to reveal the drawing that is on top of your image, um, which is a really helpful way to say, trace um, trace an idea and then sketch on top of it. And then you wanna reduce the background to just see the drawing. So really helpful tool there. The last one that we're going to look at is the options for the text, which are also quite similar, except here you have the ability to edit text. So if we tap on that, you can see that we can change the, um, the font there. We can edit our text, change the color, change the font. And when we're done, just hit done and you can see our changes are reflected there. Now let's take a look at the copy feature, which is a really, really special one. So if we hit copy on this layer, you can see that it's been added to the top of my layer toolbar. And if I return to my project page, I'm gonna make a new project and then you can see that that layer is still standing on top of your layer toolbar. If you tap it, it's been inserted into your new drawing. You can rescale it or you can just leave it as it is. And now you can start drawing, building on your work and, and continue your, your sketch. You remember how when we added a layer, it added a layer to the whole screen? Let's go to project settings and try something out. So we went to the project page and tap the little gear bar there. Let's take a look at what stack layers does. Right now it's toggled off. We'll turn it on, swipe that down, and we'll return to our example plan. It should uh, before have made a full layer, but now you can see it's actually only making and only adding a layer that's the size of our base layer. And this is a really, really great way to work with similar size layers. If you want to keep all of your layers the same consistent size, this is a really great way to be able to stack your, your drawings quickly and easily as you work. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out our other how-to videos.